well as you can see, trying to solve the new challenges that are brought by the digitalization of the economy can be made by trying to adapt uh, existing um, taxes like the VAT, uh, by changing systems that we thought would be uh, perfect and eternal, uh, like a fraction payment or, in that case, import on small value, value uh, consignments. Uh, but um, it seems that it is not enough, at least in the eyes of um, some decision makers who want to go further. It's not enough to uh, try to adapt the VAT system. Um, we have to try to um, something else, create uh, new uh, taxes um, beyond um, what we uh, already have. Uh, my uh, talk uh, will concentrate on those uh, new uh, levies that are currently either implemented at the level of some states or discussed at the level of the European Union uh, and less and less, to be honest, at the level of the OECD. Um, it, um, but the, the discussion uh, finds its roots in um, a general intent of international um, organizations and states to address uh, the issue of digitalization and its impact on taxation. So it's basically uh, um, echoes what uh, uh, Marta said uh, this morning. It's the idea, you probably have seen all seen those graphs that if you compare the effective tax rate of uh, digital companies, even if it's not always easy to ring fence this um, uh, concept uh, compared to traditional uh, businesses, you see there is a difference in, in average tax rate. That, that's where the, the discussion starts uh, from. Then, um, as you or most of you uh, no, uh, digitalization has been a topic of uh, various reports, uh, and I didn't mention the European Commission 2014 report, but uh, it's also interesting, 2015, um, with different solutions that were put on the table, and uh, there was the solution of adapting the uh, corporate tax uh, system, uh, the solution of reintroducing, because we have had for a long time and we still have, uh, withholding taxes on certain uh, payments and transactions, and then there was on the table uh, the possibility of having some kind of equalization levies, uh, taxes whose nature was to be uh, determined uh, that will would create uh, some kind of level playing field between digital business and traditional uh, business. Um, the OECD is moving further and further away from this idea of having specific taxes on, um, on digital uh, activities by trying to find, as they say, a consensus-based solution which would basically uh, uh, modify the rules of attribution of um, the taxation of uh, business income in uh, double tax treaties along uh, different lines. Um, there is, of course, no international consensus on those specific, as they call them in uh, March 2018, excise tax on, on e-services. Uh, um, in the public consultation of the OECD, that has been launched in February this year. There is no trace of uh, specific taxes, uh, no, as they call, interim measures, uh, but a more general discussion about modification of tax treaties and Americanization, let's say, of the international uh, tax system, because it seems quite clear that when the, the, the OECD uh, puts in a discussion uh, a document on digitalization of the economy uh, a global anti-base erosion proposal that it is directly inspired from uh, the, the latest American tax reform uh, and has not so much to do with the digital economy and more with, with uh, BEPS as such. Uh, three proposals uh, 
in the, the discussion draft of the OECD, this is direct taxation. But it's just uh, interesting to see that um, the, the proposals uh, of the OECD tend to rely on, let's say, realities or taxable presence that, is, that, are also in, that have also inspired uh, discussion on the adoption of indirect tax measures, and in particular the fact that once uh, you have a customer base in a country, um, it creates value as such, uh, and therefore justifies uh, taxation in the country where the customers are located, and you can translate this intuition into direct tax measures or uh, indirect uh, tax measures. That is what the European um, Union has done, the European uh, Commission, uh, with um, after modifying rules in the area of VAT on um, uh, electronic services, um, which had a rather uh, strong impact on uh, allocation of VAT revenues between countries, so in one, from one day to the other, one year to the other, Luxembourg lost uh, between 700 and 800 million euros, thanks to the, the change of uh, allocation rules in the area of VAT on digital services, so those are not innocent uh, political choices. Uh, the uh, Commission moved uh, forward, and after discussions uh, with uh, the member states, uh, several uh, um, communication uh, proposed, as you know, to uh, two uh, different uh, ways, one a short term and then on the, on the longer term. Longer term was to adapt the concept of permanent establishment and um, the proposal discussed today um, was to introduce an, an indirect tax on a certain digital service. And it was intended as a, an interim uh, measure at the time the OECD was still talking about uh, interim uh, measures. And um, this is um, the graph that the, the Commission um, put on its website to explain the tax. Uh, basically, the idea that some type of electronic services uh, foster, uh, when there is a sufficient customer base in a country, uh, the right uh, to tax those, uh, the turnover, um, which is relay directly related uh, to those services, with um, um, a definition of the scope of the personal scope of application of that tax that would only supposedly tar target uh, large uh, multinationals, taking into account uh, the, not only the worldwide revenue but also the EU uh, revenue. And uh, in uh, several uh, measures that have been implemented or are being implemented in single member states, uh, there is a domestic uh, revenue uh, threshold. Uh, this directive has been intensely discussed uh, during the last uh, six months of 2018. Um, in the, the, within the framework of the Austrian presidency. Um, um, some states clearly opposed it, um, at least almost from uh, the beginning. Uh, there were discussions also about uh, the, the na nature of that tax. Was it a direct tax? Was it an indirect tax? Would it fall within the scope of existing tax treaties? Um, discussions, of course, uh, linked to the political implication of that tax and then the relationship with uh, the U.S. since, of course, uh, the main targets of that tax were uh, U.S.-based uh, platforms. Um, the, the, the risk of uh, double taxation also was present, even if in that case it was a proposal at the EU level that would have supposedly uh, avoided uh, any type of double taxation, at least uh, within uh, member states. Um, the activities covered by uh, the proposal, or the original proposal, 
were of uh, three types. Um, advertisement services through uh, platforms, um, the, the transfers of users' activities and uh, data, and more generally uh, all the services making use of um, uh, multi-sided uh, digital uh, interface with the exclusion of um, traditional e-commerce, so uh, retail activities, uh, streamings, uh, streaming services were also excluded um, games um, um, that would uh, require a player-to-player -player interface uh, would be excluded and uh, uh, crowd crowdfunding and other financing uh, activities uh, through uh, platform and intra-group um, services also uh, were excluded from uh, the original proposal. Um, as I said, it was discussed, but in December, early December 2018, um, the Austrian presidency wanted to present a compromise proposal, but that was uh, quashed uh, by um, uh, bilateral initiative, a Franco-German initiative, aiming at reducing the scope of uh, the, the Commission proposal, focusing just on advertisement services. Um, it was a discussion during the, the whole night before the ECOFIN Council, and um, the, 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 the French basically pushed the Germans to accept uh, a limited tax only to uh, advertisement, focusing on advertisement services. Uh, now it seems that um, uh, the Romanian uh, presidency is not uh, pushing uh, very much uh, for uh, this uh, proposal. We still do not have, so we've got this Franco-German uh, two, two sheets uh, proposal, but there is no modification of the original Commission proposal, and um, it does not seem like the Commission is very willing to change its original proposal. The question is whether there is appetite for an enhanced cooperation between some member states, uh, but considering the uh, uh, failure, uh, current failure of uh, the, the former uh, enhanced cooperation of the financial transaction tax, it seems uh, unlikely that uh, member states would embark in such uh, um, an adventure, at least if they're not sure that this um, won't uh, happen, uh, that, it, that, it, that some, something will come out of it. Um, well, that doesn't mean that nothing is um, moving within the European Union or even uh, outside, because even if it is unlikely that we will have soon an EU harmonized tax on the turnover of digital platforms, several states are adopting it. Um, recently, most recent, uh, is France. Um, there is a draft uh, a pro proposal that has been uh, uh, adopted by the French government early uh, this month, um, taking the same worldwide threshold as the EU uh, original proposal, so 750 million euros, but a lower threshold since it applies only in France um, of uh, 25 million um, of um, activities covered by uh, that uh, proposal, which are the same as the uh, European Commission uh, proposal. It's 3% like the European uh, Commission, um, deductible from the corporate tax base, or even if it's not uh, corporate tax, uh, there is a deduction. It's not creditable against corporate tax. It's deductible from the, the, the tax base, as any cost would be. Um, retroactive, applicable from the 1st of, of January, and uh, they expect that it will yield in uh, some years from now over 600 million euros. Uh, Italy, well, um, Italy uh, also... Um, there was the adoption of that tax, but uh, we're still waiting for 
the entry into uh, force. As you know, the Italian government is quite, uh, is quite uh, uh, original, a rocky one. Uh, so we'll see whether they manage to uh, adopt an implementing degree. Uh, but there is also this tax uh, with uh, the same threshold as the French uh, tax for uh, worldwide income, but a much uh, lower threshold for income, um, uh, domestic income. We're talking about 5 uh, billion uh, euros. Uh, 5 million, sorry, 5.5 million uh, uh, euros uh, yearly. Spain. Well, uh, Spain, there is a government bill, but uh, um, considering the situation of the Spanish government, uh, I doubt that it will be approved, unless you, you prove me wrong, but uh, uh, there was also, with an even lower threshold of 3 million euros turnover, domestic turnover, um, but a very, uh, 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 as regards the expected yield, a very uh, uh, confident um, uh, projection by the, the, the Spanish government of over 1 billion euros, which is twice what the, the French expected to be in four years from now. Uh, so we'll see. There was a draft bill um, discussed uh, in Parliament, but uh, it, uh, it's, uh, it was simply proposed by a single um, uh, MEP, but uh, uh, without uh, a majority. Um, outside Europe, something is moving too. Um, well, um, India and Japan have chosen, but some years from now, for another, um, uh, for other uh, types of, of measure. Uh, India um, is focusing on online advertisement uh, services with a six percent. Uh, withholding tax on the gross uh, payment, which is quite easy to administer, and, but only uh, a withholding tax uh, applicable to foreign companies, um, which would raise, of course, certain issues within the EU if one single state would decide to adopt that kind of measure, um, while uh, Japan uh, applies a specific consumption tax on digital uh, services um, provided to domestic consumers, uh, which is a kind of VAT-like uh, tax, uh, but uh, separate from the, the, the ordinary uh, VAT uh, framework. So that's, that was a, a, a small summary of what is currently happening in, in Europe. Other countries have adopted uh, uh, measures outside outside Europe. Um, it seems that it is a hard um, way. Creating a new tax is never very uh, easy, and um, there is probably also a lack of a clear objective. And the question is whether you want to fix the issue of digitalization, uh, or if you want simply um, to target uh, certain companies. Uh, in particular large uh, American giants um, and show that the EU is capable as it is in the area of uh, competition law uh, to um, discipline uh, those uh, huge multinationals. But um, if there is no clear political choice as regards the intention uh, of the, this new levy, I don't think that there is a the possibility that it will be approved, uh, uh, agreed upon soon. Um, also because, um, and that's my more general remark about EU harmonization, uh, since we're never dealing, although everybody's talking about that outside the room, but inside the room about um, allocation of tax revenue between member states, uh, because we harmonize usually for the the beauty or the coherence of the system, but not uh, to have more money, since there is no, uh, no real um, attempt to clearly um, define what are the portion of tax revenue that each um, member state will be entitled to, it is very hard to discuss about uh, 
uh, new, new taxes within the European Union because member states do not know exactly what, what there is to lose, what, what, what they, can, they can gain. And that, that's, uh, that was clear. And now what will they lose also as regards presence, business presence of those uh, big companies um, and to make a link with, uh, to what was said uh, this morning by colleague Jean-Christophe de Fregne, uh, there is also uh, an equality among member states as regards um, business presence of those large digital companies. Uh, if you look, for example, at uh, uh, the investments that uh, Google is currently doing in Belgium, uh, it's, of course, much more a much more sensitive issue uh, for Belgium to adopt uh, a Google tax when they are in the middle of negotiating an extension of uh, a Google uh, data center in, uh, in the region of Charleroi than for other states who have less uh, business presence, Google business presence or do not fear that Google will not uh, invest on their uh, territory. And so that makes the position of each member state much more uh, very, very different and for some of them uh, very difficult. We've talked about Chinese dependency, but some states are also dependent from the investment of large American digital platforms. And we are stuck a bit in between two uh, uh, giant economic uh, giants. And with that, I uh, close.